see something on my TV, smile at me and say, if you know what I mean, I don't like to look into a screen. You might think that I'm some kind of a geek, because every time I open my mouth, I say something that's real uncool. Well, I might be lots of different things. I want to get close to you. This is a, a television program, actually. We, we make it. I'm Jay, and I'm the bartender, as you can tell by the clever way that I pump my keg. Oh, thank you. And uh, my name's B. I'm the editor and beer drinker. Actually, we're both beer drinkers, uh, because we are drinking beer. Yeah. And that kind of makes us what we are, exactly. Exactly. So, a uh, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, a toast, actually, to love. Love on the rocks, actually. This episode of Rocks. Love Ain't on no the rocks. no big surprise. But anyway, video, yes, uh, we're here, obviously, in a, at an undisclosed location, videotaping ourselves. In the heart of Bloomington, Indiana, but that's all we're going to tell you. Oh, that's right, Bloomington, Indiana. That's where we make this television program. Rocks. Yep. And uh, actually, this show, Love on the Rocks, is about kind of love and Valentine's Day and, and uh, all of that. And, and we thought we'd kick it off with this little clever um, segue to this. in my role as bartender, it's, it's come upon me to, that I have to mix a drink here, and I'm going to do just that. Um, this is going to be called a Love on the Rocks, um, and uh, as you can see, I'm mixing it in this cup, this glass type plastic thing. <coughs> yes, this cup given to us by Liz and Kevin, um, two lovers in this community of Bloomington, Indiana. Oh, it's gin. <laughs> Um, oh, because it's alcohol. Yes, that's it. Um, because, uh, you know, any love relationship has to do with um, alcohol and drunkenness and stupidity. Just add some port, I'd say um, that much. Any love relationship has to have some heat to it, and so we're going to add some, some hot sauce to this. Um, just a little bit, because this is hot stuff. That's way too much, actually. Sourness is, uh, is a, a part of any relationship, and so um, we're going to add some lemon juice. And then finally, um, uh, the, the final and, and uh, unfortunately most prevailing ingredient um, here is bitters. Um, because uh, bitterness always seems to find its way into love when it's on the rocks. <laughs> um, it's kind of hot, sour, um, and, and strong. Um, kind of like love, in a way. So, in the spirit of Valentine's Day, which is what we're celebrating actually, February 14th, Valentine's Day, um, we're clad in green. Yeah, yeah. Now you may think that's inappropriate because, you know, you see all these heart-shaped Valentine's Day stuff, and it's always red. Red, you know, red being the color of blood and your mm -hmm. internal organs, and the heart, after all, is internal organs. Yeah. But actually, green is very appropriate. You know where that heart shape comes from? No. Well, it's St. Valentine. Yeah, uh, I actually heard this before. Yeah, he Go was, for it, he was, Tell us. St. Valentine was in prison for, um, I think, for being a Christian, probably, uh, which is, you know, prison. That's where all Christians belong. Yeah. And uh, he uh, was, when he was in prison, he actually wrote little letters and sent them out to his, the people that he knew uh, on, on little leaves that were shaped like hearts. Okay. Oh. But obviously they were leaves, so they were green, not yeah. red. And in the spirit of that, we wanted to present kind of uh, some, I guess you would call video portraits mm -hmm. of several different relationships of people in our little set. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, who's first? Well, first of all, uh, me and oh. my significant other, uh, my possel cue, as they're sometimes called. You're familiar with the term possel cue, of course. Uh, well, we'll have to get to that later in our vocabulary section. Um, what was I saying? Love. Oh, love. You. Me and Christy Paxson. Uh, now, Christy Paxson, of course, is a person that uh, any regular viewer would be familiar with. If, if not... Um, then you're we are about to find out because uh, Christy and I 
actually uh, have been lovers for a while now, and in fact, we've been married for a while. And uh, here's a little, a little portrait, if you will, of our relationship and, and what it means to us to be together. Hey. Hey, what? That's odd, <laughs> you fucker. Hi, I'm Bart Everson. <laughs> I'm Chris Bruce. And uh, we've, we've been an item for like, uh, like two and a half years now since our first date. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's been non-stop ever since. Yeah. So, um, we're in bed right now, which is where we spend a lot of our time together. And that's when I start to notice the zits. Yeah, actually this is kind of a, a side of our relationship that it's, um... Oh, here's one. Hold still, honey. Well, it's, it's kind of ugly, but it's real. Uh, it's, it's actually, it reminds me of, you know, primate behavior, because they, uh, groom each other like this. So we were supposed to say something about love and our relationship. Love is like a clogged pore. You have to squeeze it every now and then. Ow! And sometimes it hurts. But isn't that the nature of love? You know, our own John Cougar said it best when he said, it hurts so good. Now hold still, baby, I got a big one right here. So uh, one of the things that we have to deal with around here sometimes is that my wife has to give herself an injection. I woke up feeling a little bad. And now you got a green. Now I got me a little green. Got me green right there. Right there, right up there. Can you see it? I'm, I'm one of the six million or 20 million, depending on which, you know, study you read. But is afflicted by migraine headaches, and there ain't nothing that can get rid of them except the needle. You heard of Prozac. Prozac ain't shit compared to this. Eat my ass, Prozac. Hey, Lily, <laughs> you ain't got nothing. And out she comes, out she comes, out she comes, out she comes. Ooh, there she is, Ooh, there she, she is. is, Miss America. There she is, Miss America. I love you. I love you. 0 0.5 <gasps> milliliters of sumatriptan, OK? That's the name of the drug which will go up to my brain. It'll tell my brain to make more serotonin and to get rid of this headache. And I just press the red button. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, God, that really hurts. Now I'm going to pull it away. We're video files, kind of. Actually, Christy and I are both committed to an artistic vision a uh, experimental art project, kind of art, life, life, art, stupidity. Matrix. Matrix, alcohol, all that stuff. Um, and what, what I mean is that uh, we videotape everything that we do because we're committed to the documentation of our lives as a creative artistic project. Um, the public documentation of private lives has never gone so far before. You could even call it an endeavor, sort of like what you wrote in your yearbook in eighth grade. Good luck with all your future endeavors. This is one of those such endeavors that someone years ago wished me good luck on. Statistics. Yeah, Christy and B got married, of course. Um, when was it? Well, uh, gosh, it was about a, a year, 1993. Yeah, so, so you kind of fall into uh, the married category in our society, of course, which is what we've just said, and I'm just kind of remembering as I try to find the statistic that I was... I looking. hate it when you slap a label on me. This is the marital status of the population. 46% of people our age have never been married. People yeah. our age being like, you know, late 20s, 25, 25, 25 to 29, somewhere yeah. in that range. Yeah. Um, that means like half of the population has never yeah. been married, but really that doesn't really tell you much because a lot of people, you know, they'll shack up and live together. And, uh, and and they don't get married, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a significant relationship. And yeah. that's what yeah. Possle Q uh, means. Possle Q. Possle Q. P O S S L Q, I think, or something like that. It stands for person of significant living quarters shared. Person of shared. Person of shared significant living quarters. I don't know exactly what it stands for, but I'll put it on the screen, yeah. and you will be edified, as will we when we watch this show, because <laughs> we like to watch our own selves on television. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, 
Here's a portrait of a couple of people who, Eric and Rachel, mm -hmm. who live together yeah. um, and have a, a, a meaningful possible Q kind of relationship. They're not married, uh, and yet um, they're shacked up and living together. Yeah. And we think that's all right. And uh, we wanted to drink a toast then to Eric and Rachel. So here's a, an intimate portrait. Eric and I met at the Fool's Parade that Bart, Joe, Christy, and I organized for October 4th, 1992. He was the first one there. A few days later, I saw him again at a Blooming Peace meeting. He had joined while I'd been away for a couple of weeks. He knew that I co-produced the Christy Paxson show, and so he asked me to help him work on his documentary called The Penis Project. Joe said, if that isn't a come on, I don't know what is. Well, before Rachel and I started engaging in mating activities, we had a long talk about what we wanted and didn't want in a relationship. We had both recently escaped long-term relationships with possessive people, and we both wanted to remain single for a while. During the talk, we realized that we wanted the same things, although our lifestyles were very different. Although we were hesitant about starting another exclusive relationship, in two weeks, that was exactly what we had. Maybe we saw something different in each other than we had seen in previous partners, or maybe the time was just right. I had never given a serious thought to marriage. I thought that I was from the generation that would reject that sort of institution. Marriage is a meaningless and empty concept to me. It's not the commitment that scares me, though I used to think that that was rather frightening. But then I realized that my previous relationships were what had been truly repugnant. I spent most of my time in relationships trying to figure out how I was going to get out of them. I also see no point in getting married. Weddings are one of the central cultural trappings of a society that I, for the most part, reject. If anyone wants to get married, it's almost a sure sign that they shouldn't. You've got to wonder what's wrong with um, their relationship that they mistakenly think that a public binding agreement will fix. But we are starting a business together, and that is more of a binding commitment to each other than a wedding would ever be. Well, so Eric is, uh, Eric, who you just saw there with Rachel, Eric is actually a um, guy who does some animations uh, occasionally, and we the, sometimes show yeah. them on this show. Uh huh. And uh, the penis, of course, is uh, significant. Well, it, in love relationships, it yeah. kind of plays a role yeah. if there's a male member uh, yeah. of the relationship, so to speak. Uh, so anyway, we do have an animation that Eric has worked long and hard on, mm -hmm. and that would be <laughs> us, this thing. yet another segue. You know, we're sitting here kind of just telling you about things that you're about to see and things that you already saw um, as, as kind of a, a way to, to guide you along through this, this deep and complex program that we call life. <laughs> I thought you were going to mix another drink, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. Here we go. You know, I feel like I have to have some function today, and since I'm not saying anything interesting, I'm going to... Um, and get drunk. Yeah, get drunk. Um, we're going to mix a drink called a pisser, um, because, of course, you know, sometimes love is a pisser for some people. Um, and uh, this drink, of course, has some vodka in it. Um, this is cheap vodka, because, you know, when, when, uh, when love is on the rocks, um, it's, uh, you know, the best way to, to cope with it is to get cheap alcohol and, um, and drink it. Um, but, of course, when you drink, um, you have to flush that out. And, uh, and that's what this drink is all about. It's got cranberry juice in it, which everyone knows helps you urinate more um, proficiently and, and uh, affluently, or what's the word I'm looking for? With abandon, yeah. yeah. And then just add some, some lemon juice, because, because of course lemon juice is yellow, and what is urine if not yellow? And then you want to taste this fine concoction, the pisser, um, and see what it, how it affects you. Well, I put too much lemon juice in that. <laughs> oh, God. Damn you! I'm a fucking incompetent guy. Um, and uh, that probably has something to do with why um, my love life has, has fallen apart lately. But we're we'll going to get to that. Yeah, later. In the meantime, um, let's do this. Uh, 
That's right, even me, T. Black, is softened from his hard nature by the submissive realities of true love. So when I first met Zoe, she was very elusive to me, very hard to get in touch with. She'd disappear after class. I could never reach her on the phone. And then I thought, well, maybe if I write her some letters. And the more letters that I wrote her, the longer those letters got and the farther I was willing to walk in order to uh, drop those letters off at her house just to have some sort of interaction with her, sometimes 45 minutes in the snow. It was worth it all, those steps that I took, those words that I wrote. It was worth it all. I used tattoos to symbolize important points in my life. I like the idea of a tattoo rather than a wedding ring. You can always hock it for the gold value. She's a permanent part of my body. Z for Zoe. She's a permanent part of my life. Our love is unconditional. I adore you, my Zoe, forever. So T. Black, um, as you may know, T. Black, the, uh, the guy, I think it's, it's his voice that you were hearing there reading that poem. I don't really know because I'm so unclear about what's going on. Uh, but I am the editor, uh -huh. and therefore I have great authority. Yeah, as, as demonstrated by um, the way that you conduct yourself in public yes. here on this television program. And the way that I sit here confidently and hold forth uh, <laughs> with you, the home viewer, yeah. and you, Jay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, buddies, uh, as it were. Uh, but anyway, T. Black, this guy, this anarchist guy, uh, he, with the pierced nose, you're mm -hmm. seeing his image there again, um, he is, in fact, the uh, guy who does this Anarchy Diary segment that we often have. Yeah. yeah. If you watch this television show ever before, you've probably seen Anarchy Diary. Well, this week, Anarchy Diary rocks presents Anarchy Diary, which in turn presents Borgnine in their presentation of love. Love was invented by love's baby soft. Charlotte and I know about love and the fire says love and the pretzels. New kids on the block. And when you're really hungry for that love kind of snack. Snickers. I love a snicker. You want a snicker? Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Ooh, yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. Look at that, close up. That's a thousand dollar shot right there. Oh, yeah. Do ya? Do ya, poopin'? It kind of drips down on the lip, you know? Hey, what happened to your hair? <laughs> I love. Now that's love! Right, boy? Chuck. Uh, Chuck. I never met. Chuck. Chuck uh, Woolery. Do you love me, Chuck? I never did. Do you Don't love me, Chuck. Condoms? I love that. That's a bullshit propaganda, man. It's I trying to that. make us insensitive and resistant to real love. It is love. I think love, or the lack thereof. Everybody gather around. Come on, Pop. the good and bad in this world? I just think if we each take the time to love someone <laughs> and be loved in return, that maybe... What kind of symbolism is that? Come on. I love you, Brad. We love you, Brad. We love you, Brad. We, we love you, Brad. <laughs> Well, I've never seen anything quite like that. That was um, something that I've never seen quite like that. I love you. You love me. We're a dysfunctional family. Nothing like that before. Um, but, uh, you know, there are, there are things that I've seen before. Plenty of things that I've experienced in my life. 
Um, and uh, without further ado, um, I'm tired of listening to these other people, and I want to talk about myself. So here goes. Here's a thorny situation. Oh, my God. And we have many thorny situations to talk about. <laughs> Today. Today. On Love on the Rocks. Yes, I'm Jay. I'm uh, kind of here behind the camera. You may have seen me before on this television program, Rocks. Jenny Beasley here has also been a regular fixture of this program. For almost a year now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was on the first time over a year ago. Yeah, it was, uh, what, what episode was that? And I remember that so fondly from episode number 45, um, 29 minutes. Thank you for coming this year. You know, we really Thank enjoyed you. your support this year with the campaign. Indeed. There's only one line that I say, so it's hard to catch it. It's one of those nuances that you only see if you watch the show a lot. Yeah, and see, that's, what, that's how our relationship kind of started, was Jenny started watching this TV program, and, and uh, she kind of got to know me and B through the, through the miracle of television. But I already knew Christy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and then she, we met each other at the Bluebird here in Bloomington. Oh, what yeah. a nice place to meet your, your, your lover. Yeah. yeah, we met at a bar. Isn't that embarrassing? But, but yet, Jenny um, intrigued me with what she said about our TV program. And, oh, you uh, mean I said things you didn't already know? Well, it was actually just the fact that she said something perceptive rather than, Hey, you make that TV show, man. Don't make fun of anyone. Oh, uh, I'm not. As you can see, we have our little disagreements. Um, and that's really what this segment of, of Love on the Rocks is about, is Jenny B and J on the rocks. So we decided, or I decided, to ask Jenny to marry me. Ironically enough, I did that on D-Day last year um, in a conversation which began um, with Jenny saying that she didn't think she loved me the right way. So I was kind of afraid that I, I didn't have unconditional love for you, meaning that, you know, that I wasn't going to be wifey and um, really, you know, answer to your whims and petty needs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think at that point, Jay said that um, that's okay because, well, if I'm an asshole, you shouldn't like me. We started planning for a, a, a wedding date of May 20th of this year, 1995. Now things, well, um, things have changed a little bit. And here to tell you more about that is Jenny. And, and we've, we've walked over to the Bisbee Library where I've got to take back these uh, holiday vacation books mm -hmm. um, that we were going to use as like travel guides for our honeymoon that we're not going to have. <laughs> Yeah, the wedding's been postponed. That's what uh, what we're getting at here. Um, and you may be wondering, well, why? Why is the wedding postponed? Where are we now, as we said? Well, we fell in love, wanted to get married, but something happened along the way, and, um, God, I feel so weird. So now I just have... An empty an bag. empty bag. We've had some pretty tough fights lately. Um, and uh, after one of those, those struggles, I uh, videotaped myself, actually, um, because I felt very exasperated, and I figured I might as well just document my feelings at the time. And uh, without further ado, here's that little piece of um, video. So I guess it's over. Um, Jenny and I just uh, had, I guess, our, f I don't know, assumably it was our final fight. Last night she told me that uh, she didn't want to marry me. <laughs> it's four months from our projected wedding date. She said that the TV my choice of creative medium is too invasive. That it, uh, that she thought that she could grow into it, but she couldn't. Maybe I'm not, um, maybe I'm not the kind of person who does well in relationships. Maybe I'm not right for her. Ow. 
love hurts. Ow. Oh. Love hurts, just like that J. P Peter's Giles Peter band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love stinked. Yeah. So I guess uh, we have our problems, we have our troubles, we have our differences of priorities, differences of opinions. Um, but uh, hopefully um, we can make it. If Looks we try. like we made it. it high. Through all the trouble on the way. So I guess it's, uh, it's time um, to, to wrap this thing up. This uh, episode of this show rocks. Yes. Love on the rocks. We're at the ass end of another episode. And hopefully next week we'll be alive and be able to join you at this same time on this same channel that you're watching here. At this same undisclosed location. Yeah, yeah. In Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah. Um, but until then, um, keep your glasses full and, and keep reaching for the bottle. Um, and uh, <laughs> love, love will keep us together. It, where, how does that song go? Love, love will keep us together. Think of me, babe, whenever some sweet talking girl comes along, singing her song. Look in your heart, you just got, got to, to be, be strong. strong. Just stop, stop. Cause, cause I really love you. Stop, I'll, I'll be, be thinking, thinking of you. Look in your heart and let love keep us together, whatever, with leather. <laughs> uh, what's another good one? Love, love, love. Do, 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 do. Because we're smoking marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. Let's see. D -A -D -E. This is kind of a woman's song. I've been diseased. My girl's been next to me. She done my diet. So I got some interesting mail the other day. This is, uh, this is from uh, my friend Ken um, in Lexington, Kentucky. Ken is an artist down there. And, uh, and he drew this for us. Um, as you can see, this is uh, the cover to The Smiling Dog, which is uh, the Rock's newsletter, as you can see there. And look, it's, well, it's a picture of B and I um, drawn as dogs with a joint. With this. Well, this is, in fact, the cover to The New Smiling Dog, which, by the time you see this, is in print and uh, is probably already mailed out. Um, and so you should have it in your hands if you're on our mailing list. But that's the point that I was trying to get to here is, are you on our mailing list? Maybe you are and maybe you aren't. If you haven't gotten this smiling dog, then you probably aren't on our mailing list and you should be. So um, please send us your address to the address on the, sc on the screen, your address sent to that address. Yeah. Um, you're or entitled to us email at that address. What was you going to say? You're entitled to a free copy after also. Yeah, get what's coming to you. Yeah, the Rock's newsletter. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to edit this in unless uh, it's, we can make good. Uh, yeah, it will. Where there's smoke, there is fire. This girl must have been a six alarm. She got down. I mean, uh, this girl knew I at all was that. She was ideal, a perfect woman in every way. She was a liar. She 
said she had her checkup yesterday. She was a, a VD woman. And to think I let her sit on my face.